Hi, welcome back to Digit.in. My name is Vignesh, and today we're looking at yet another Lenovo IdeaPad. Today we have with us the Lenovo IdeaPad 330. Now, this is the non-S model, which means this is not the 330S, but this is the 330. Now, I can differentiate between this and the 330S because, trust me, this is a lot fatter, this is a lot heavier as well. And it's got a plastic body. That's how I know the difference. Anyhow, I like what I see on the outside, but let's see what's good on the inside. Well, coming to the build and design of the IdeaPad 330, it definitely looks a lot similar to the more expensive IdeaPad 330S, but it's a lot different from it if you examine it closely. The body is made wholly of plastic, but the matte-like finish on the lid does what it can to look metallic. The surface of the lid and the base flexes considerably under pressure. If you try and press it and hold it, well, that's quite sad, but what can you do? At 2.1 kilograms, the laptop feels fairly heavy to lift and carry around, but it's not a big bother once you get used to it. Tapping hard on the keyboard also reveals some unnecessary flex. Huh. But again, it's a plastic body. What are you going to do? The surface around the keyboard is of the same color as the lid and has a brush texture that looks rather decent. Around the sides of the display, you see a thick black bezel and on the surface of the lid, a big Lenovo logo. The display folds all the way back to a good 180 degrees. Now this is a really useful feature when you're working, let's say, on your bed or a sofa with your legs crossed. The Lenovo IdeaPad 330 comes with two 14-inch display options, a non-IPS LCD panel with an HD resolution and an IPS LCD panel with a full HD resolution. The model I received only got the non-IPS HD display, but its performance was quite decent. The brightness of the screen was good for indoor use, but not so much for outdoor use. What I didn't like about the display was that the colors always looked washed out and the text always looked grainy. Audio output through the tiny inbuilt speakers is clear, but feeble. The speakers are good enough for plain vocals inside a quiet, medium-sized conference room, but really nothing more than that. Ports on the IdeaPad 330 are a bit of a letdown. It has all the ports lined up on just one side of its body. On the left side, it's got the power port, a LAN port, an HDMI port, two full-size USB ports, a 3.5mm audio jack, and a card reader slot. All the other sides of the laptop are completely bare. That is, of course, if you look at just the right side, which has a plastic lid for where you should be seeing an optional DVD drive. Coming to the keyboard and touchpad, we see no dedicated keys for home, end, page up and page down functions. But that's alright because a lot of laptops don't have them anyway. The keys on the keyboard look flat and feel shallow but are decent for everyday typing. That said, I still wouldn't recommend this if you're going to be doing a lot of typing at work. In the dark, you might find yourself straining your eyes to discern the keys as this keyboard has no backlighting at all. The touchpad on the IdeaPad 330, sadly, is not a precision unit, and Lenovo offers no additional touchpad utility to tweak the settings for taps and swipes. So you may not be able to change actions of a double tap or a triple tap using just Windows. The click buttons on the bottom half of the touchpad are easy enough to press. Now, to give you an insight into what performance on the IdeaPad 330 is like, I'd like to show you a six-year-old Lenovo laptop. Well, this could be 10 years old for all I know. All I know is that it's thick, it's fat, and God, it's low. Yep, so you can already tell what the performance on the IdeaPad 330 is like then. So this old machine, it's got a third generation Intel i3 processor, four gigabytes of RAM, and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Now this thing has an AMD E2 processor. It's good, but it's just not quite there, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, but the performance on the Lenovo IdeaPad 330 can only be termed disappointingly slow. The laptop has a 7th generation AMD E2 9000 APU, 4GB of RAM, 1TB of hard drive space, and an integrated AMD GPU. For me, the laptop took over 2 minutes and 5 seconds to boot up completely all the way to the desktop. Google Chrome took over 28 seconds to launch for the first time and about 6 seconds subsequently. The start menu took about two seconds to appear almost every single time I pressed the start button. Browsing on the IdeaPad 330 was a frustrating experience. Even with only six tabs open, every single tab kept reloading regularly. I noticed some lag in the audio playback, but the laptop was able to play full HD videos on YouTube fairly well. 
As far as battery life goes, the Lenovo IdeaPad 330 lasted me 153 minutes on a single full charge during benchmark tests, which is a good sign because it scored seven minutes more than what the costly IdeaPad 330S managed a few weeks ago. With daily usage, the laptop lasts about three and a half hours, which is decent, but again, not quite up there. All things considered, I can't say I'm very impressed with the Lenovo IdeaPad 330 because yes, the touchpad is decent. Yes, the keyboard is decent as well. The display is middling, I'd say, but otherwise performance on this thing is just quite disappointing, really. Do not even try gaming on this thing if you want to retain your sanity. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, please hit the like button below. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.